Hi, I'm Daniel, and this is Asheville Weekly, episode 52. Yes, one year, 12 months, 52 weeks, that's one year of Asheville Weekly. One whole year of this, can you imagine? Are you serious? Before we start, I want to thank everyone who's watched one or all of our episodes. We really appreciate you coming on the journey with us. And with this episode, we should hit a total of 15 million views. The very first Asheville Weekly was on the 11th of October, 2020. Click on the cards in the description to watch that video now. After the day in the life was so well received, we decided to fall back with the Laura reviews and basically create a week in my life each week. There have been highs, lows, protesters, police, legal issues, complaints. There have been days when I wanted to cry. There have been days when I've jumped for joy. There's been machinery broken. It's been an absolute roller coaster. The initial target was 10 episodes, and then we decided that we're gonna keep going until we physically can't. What I'm gonna continue to do is take each day as it comes, try to plan as best I can, adapt and move, so I can continue to try to run, grow my business, and provide you with content, and hopefully you will stay on the journey with us. Enjoy. Yeah, one take, yeah? That inspir inspiration. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was like Eminem in 8 Mile. So we're looking around the body, thinking where we can fit things. It's already getting hard, isn't it? <sighs> no, you're trying to make me get wet. We can now begin to open up the back of this. It's not going to be big enough to move a boat this big. You have to put your foot down. Love it. <laughs> Daniel is rolling on the road again. Monday morning, I'm in the yard. The concrete slab is dry and you can already drive over it. One of the lorries had to reverse in here and load earlier. It is a C40 with reinforcement bar, as you saw last week. A very long time ago, we poured the concrete over in this area. I remember there were some people doubting and said that is gonna crack. As you can see, to this point, that concrete has not cracked either. On Saturday, I did pop down and I managed to see Terry. I went to Cora's first birthday and Terry was good enough to give me a slice of cake, which I'm always happy about. Here's me, Terry and Cora over here. But I did say to Terry, and we'll check this out later. Terry, make sure you bring me a slice of cake. See, when anyone goes to a birthday party, they go anywhere. You don't even have to invite me. I'm happy if you do, but if you don't, you don't have to invite me. You just have to bring me a slice of cake, anything. Just an offering. It doesn't have to be a big slice, just a little slice, so I can experience the event as if I was there. So everybody who knows me knows that. I've got a meeting at half nine, it is 9.17. I've got a couple of things to do before that, and I'm just trying to finalize with the second volumetric concrete lorry that hopefully I can collect tomorrow or Wednesday because we have somebody coming to calibrate on Wednesday morning. A few weeks, bruv, where's my A? Bruv, I beg. A few weeks ago, I was asked to talk in Kensington Aldridge School about my story and focus on the challenges. It's the first time I've done something like this, so I'm just about to watch it back and cringe a little bit and see how I can improve. Uh, we're gonna show you a little snippet of it, but please try to remember these are children, so we have to blur their faces and the audio isn't great. No one cares what I'm doing. No one don't care about who's dirty in the yard. No one don't want to hear about no struggle and no five o'clock in the morning. No one cares. All anyone wants is gas. They want to see your watches. They want to see your car. They just, all anyone cares about is gas. The whole talk with questions is about one hour long. Let us know in the comments if you'd like us to put this out as a separate video. But remember, it's actually only one camera angle. I had to come to the sticker man's house to do an update for his channel. I believe that video is gonna be out long before this one is. So I'm just popping my head in each room and seeing how we're getting on here before I go back to the yard. This room, progressing nicely. We're about to do some spray decorating work. So we have to cover up as much as we can. Cover the floor, cover the skirting, windows also covered. Here we are in the cinema room. Uh, no point doing a lot to the walls because everything is going to be panelled here. We're just doing a bit of filling and sanding, a bit of additional electrical work. We have covered the floor in Corex. Doors and door frames are on. In the hallway, you saw Dudek and Suavec in this area last week finishing off the skirting. Of course, the skirting is done. All the flooring on the ground floor is completely done. We are just waiting for the kitchen now, but the kitchen delivery has started. So we have three fridges. Those are the first bits that have arrived and they are gonna be fitted right there. Right next to the underfloor heating manifold, we have a water softener. You've seen this room in the past, I'm not gonna dwell on it. We're ready for our second fix and final 
decorating. Last week you saw me looking at these cupboards. They are now done and in place. The rest of the room, not a lot's changed. The radiator has been taken off the wall to do some further decorating. Another room with the bespoke cabinetry moving along. And we're just using this room for a bit of storage. Jan's bed is already here. And again, these are more bits to finish off the cupboards. We have drawer runners. We have everything we need, except a set of taps, which we are waiting for in the bathroom. This door is covered up because there is decorating happening in the hallway area. Hence the reason all the skirting is covered. And a minute ago, you just missed it. This windowsill was sprayed. Progressing nicely, filling and sanding, ready for more decorating. The cabinet tree is in place. It's just covered because of the decorating of these windowsills. Here are the rads. Some of these were already on and got taken off. Some weren't on yet, but we've stacked them all here for safekeeping. Filling and sanding, radiator is removed. Getting ready for that final coat. And the same again in here. That's it for the sticker man's house. I have to get back to the yard. I've had some good news. The final uh, screen for my office from Dell, my curved screen has arrived. I wanna get back to the yard and set that up. I nearly left without showing you the back garden. Couldn't do that. If you remember two weeks ago, I showed you the fence. We were nearly done and we were putting the first, second and third coats. We'll have a look now. The fence is now on all the way around. So this area has two coats. This part of the back has one coat. And round here, we have two coats. Now, I'm going back to the yard. The second curved Dell monitor has arrived. Can't wait to get it installed. At last, my second monitor is in and I'm loving it. No one man should have all oh, that screen. Love it. It's a Tuesday morning, we're in central London. I've just seen the surgeon that operated on me and uh, when he spoke to me previously, I didn't fully understand what he was saying because I was a bit dazed and confused. But now I have spoken to him. Uh, when they actually got inside and they started having a look at my shoulder, um, they did manage to clean it up a bit, but actually the damage is irreversible. So I have cartilage on the ball of my shoulder, what has ripped off. Basically the damage looks like I was in some sort of car crash or it was a massive, um, massive impact. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what's happened, but they've managed to clean it up. And now a part of the ball of my shoulder has no more cartilage left. The loose cartilage that was floating around, they sucked all that out. I got a double shot of cortisone and there was inflammation around um, another part of it, which meant they had to shave down bone. And um, the stitching has healed well, so I'm thankful for that. And um, he used a word which I really don't like, which is manage. I don't really want to be managing anything. I want to do what I have to do. So I'm going to see... Uh, a physio, come back and see this surgeon in six weeks and hopefully I can find a way uh, can, to continue as I was going because um, for me the gym helps with my mental state, it gives me structure to my day, it's how I get my second wind and you know it, it, it's become part of my life the amount of years I've been training and it bothers me when I can't and like with all things I always want to do better so I always tend to try and pick up heavier weights try to do a bit more and a bit more because it's like a small victory it's like a small accomplishment but it looks like uh, life as I know it will change but you know I'm still alive I've still got my shoulder together there's worse things that could happen let's get back to the yard Back in the yard, having a look around, I can see that the fan is getting changed on the new Volvo lorry. Click here to watch a video of how we customize two twin Volvo FMX tipper lorries. But something has arrived. Yes, the hard copies of Ursa, <laughs> Ursum. Yes, the hard copies of Autumn Earth Movers has arrived, thankfully. Uh, very happy about this. Uh, you know, um, we tropical people love a hard copy, as my mum keeps saying. I'm going to keep this one in my office, but I did ask for a few more. So hopefully there's more coming in the post because the head of distribution of all hard copies and uniform in St. Lucia will not be happy if I just have one copy. So now it's 11.41. I have a meeting at 12, so I'm going to try and have something to eat quickly uh, before the gentleman arrives and we'll reconvene later. 
It's Wednesday morning, it's 527. I'm just about to leave the car park. I'm obviously taking this baby because that baby hasn't got any fuel in it. And if I am going to take it to the petrol station and wait for an hour and they're going to allow me a maximum of 35 pounds, I'm not going to get very far, especially because that only takes me to the bottom of the road. So everything going well so far. Feel a bit tired, but very excited to go and collect my new lorry. very quiet in the main yard. Let's head out to the backyard. Let's get our big lights on. There we go. It's 10 to 6. The boys are just doing their checks on the lorries. Let's go back over to the main yard. Bit of a problem. I need to know why those lights up there on on. Morning. How's it going, Maddie? I need to find out what's going on with those lights because those should be on so the boys can see what they're doing. Standing on the new stairs, I can see that the lights in the other yard have come on. So why have the lights in that yard come on and that light isn't coming on? 601, we've already arrived at the yard and we're leaving the yard. Heading up to the Midlands nice and early, we should beat the traffic. Half seven, we're already here. The guy's here just taking a few bits out the lorry, the tracker and a couple of fibers. When I'm in here, I love this place. What a workshop. Asheville really need a workshop like this one day, but we don't have this sort of space in the entire yard. It's concreted as well. What a yard. Ollie's gonna jump in this now, do his checks, have a little walk around, and then we'll hit the road and try and get back to the yard as soon as possible because the calibration of the other one is starting at eight o'clock on the dot. So hopefully we can get this back to the yard by 10 o'clock. And as soon as they finish with calibrating the other one, they can calibrate this one. And then this one will go to Southern Vulcanizing. So we're back in the yard, everything is going according to plan apart from the weather. So now both volumetrics are here. Now one is being calibrated and the other one will be calibrated afterwards. But what I need to do at the moment is I need to drop Ollie off to Scania to collect one of our existing volumetrics which should be out on the road but it was in Scania last night for some sort of taco repair. So I'm going to drop Ollie there and Ollie is going straight out on the road while these are calibrated. All systems go. Actually, I don't need to drop Ollie to Scania because we have the courtesy car and he's taking the courtesy car back, which means I can get on with the work I've got to do. Result. I drawed for the jacket. This jacket is one of the original old school Asheville jackets or brackets, however you pronounce it, wherever you're from. Yeah. Do you want to light a candle, man? I don't want to be in it. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Fry over there is trying to bury me about my jacket. Say, so we get that B Tech Scott jacket. What's it? It's meant to be. It's meant to be, so it's meant to be a shot jacket, but it's a Scott jacket. So he's trying to say like I'm rocking some B Tech jacket. Where is he, man? He's he's coming. Coming. This man is going for a stroll in the park, man. <laughs> well, I'm standing here. I've got emails to do. Right. You know when you just post it up. <laughs> On the block. Post it up. <laughs> just. I'm just here, innit? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear accountant. Happy birthday to you. Make a wish, say. Si. I don't wish for time off, you won't get it. <laughs> Speech! Another year older, isn't it? Any other news for us, Sai? Uh, yeah, we've got another, we've got my, another child on the way. Yes! Eight child, eight child, eight child. <laughs> Hear the news there. We'll show a little drawing here. Simon has a little one on the way. Congratulations yeah. to Lisa and Simon. Lisa's the one who's got to do all the work, side. But yeah, congratulations yeah. to the family. Yeah, Onwards and upwards. That's Much appreciate it. Come and say, cut the cake. I want to slice it. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> right, enough room. Right yeah, he does. <laughs> Brother, I'm not having that small plate. Move that small plate from there. <laughs> <laughs> Nice! Say, so, i got a question. Word, are, are you going to be one of those people that take the cake home and don't leave it here? Or are you oh, leaving yeah, it here at the end of the day? Everyone. He's going to give it out to everyone. Yeah. Who's everyone? 
<laughs> Bro, that cake don't look like it was stretched that far, boy. I mean, you just uh, if I was you, I would just make sure that at the end of the day you leave some here in it. If yeah, I was you in it, <laughs> some of us have to work late, innit? Yeah, that's fine, no, so we'll let Simon yeah. cut it up. We like to make a fuss out of people on their birthday here. Yeah. Not that we don't make a fuss out of Simon every day. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, everyone. You're welcome. Yeah, well, there's enough nice words now, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. You, have to be, you have to be careful. See him, yeah. He's a, he will keep filming, yeah. yeah, yeah. Say, so, did you see what they did yeah. to me on the weekly when I left it and the mic was working yeah. and they left it oh, in I when I went and stole Vesha? Oh, now her daughter bought her those chocolates. Oh, no, I still want her back. Nice. <laughs> 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 I'm like, put it in. <laughs> You're still recording, aren't you? Bro, where are you going with that hot sauce? You had it. No, I haven't. You think I want to spend the rest of my day on the toilet? I thought you were a tropical people. I am a tropical people, bro. But see that hot sauce? It looks rather hot. Let me see it. What are you saying? I look like I'm scared. How much of this do you put on your food? Yeah, quite a bit. I do quite like hot sauce. Yeah? Mm. Bro, leave the fork alone, innit? No, no, I'm getting a bit anxious now for my cake, innit? <laughs> They are Bruh. <laughs> it's Thursday morning, I'm in the yard very briefly because I have to shoot off. I'm going to go back down to Isla Dogs to see if there's any 40 yard bins. I think we need a couple more. Tomorrow, we have some scaffolders come into the yard and we're going to do some work in this repair bay area. First thing we're going to do is we're going to use sheets and we're going to close it off on all three sides. Once we've closed it off, we're actually going to build it out to this point and we're going to try to make some sort of gate on the front to make this area watertight. Once we've made it watertight, then we're going to get inside, we're going to analyse how much light there is in here, maybe upgrade the lighting and then we're going to do some work on the floor here to make this area more usable. For now, um, I'm going to go and grab a couple of fittings for the volumetrics, then I'm going to Isle of Dogs and I'll be back in the yard later. Uh, down at Isla Dogs. Uh, this trip didn't really go according to plan. Turns out while I wasn't here, <laughs> they have uh, made some work of the skips. Uh, so it looks like <laughs> a lot of the bins that I was going to look at are going for scrap. But um, I believe they are going to throw me a bone. There's one here which uh, I don't believe is up to their normal standard and they are going to let me have this one. I hope. This is me trying to convince them recording this. So not that one because that's pretty decent but this one, put an A on it to try to mark it up. Very big 40 yarder there and it's got a single door. I'm going to make my way back around the North Circular and on the way I'm going to stop at Capital Plant because um, while I told you the other day that I'm looking to trade in that eight ton cap for a 13 ton Liebherr compact machine, uh, Liebherr haven't got any at the moment so we haven't serviced it in a while so we're going to buy a service kit while we're over this way and um, keep the machine running as we should. Let's go inside and see if we've got the bits. Have you got our bits, please? Service kit for an eight ton. Here's Peter, the man who will not deliver to the Asheville yard, says he doesn't have a van, but there is a van outside a lot of the time I come here. Peter, do you have anything to say for yourself? There's a fuel shortage. <laughs> If we have a look at what we found outside, there is a fuel box. So you do have fuel, you just no, don't want to deliver to our yard. This is illegal to put in vehicles. It's illegal to put in vehicles? Correct. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're a, we're by, a, by your rules, it's illegal to deliver to Asheville as well. He's got to drive around the whole North Circular for no, an hour. No but to come across and see me. Back in the yard, we're just taking all the bits out of my car and putting them in the repair bay area. Now, you saw two weeks ago, we had the problem with the roll-on, roll-off crane lorry, where the Easy Sheet system was hitting part of the flatbed. Well, what we're going to do now is bring that lorry over here. We're going to put that flatbed down and we're going to cut the ends off it so it fits. And we're also going to burn into the chassis of it so we can fit the locks on properly. What we're doing here is just slightly moving the flatbed on the body backwards and forwards to see when it's up this way, what is the furthest point it could be on either way. We need to uh, burn the hole in it that size because it could be on slightly different and then you may not be able to get the locks on. We've had a thought about it. We're not gonna cut the whole thing off. We're just gonna cut straight down here so this can be in. So I have now jump back in the cab, 
the bin is coming off, handbrake is off, and as we put it down, it's pushing us forward. So we're going to leave it in this position because we need to take it off, put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off, put it on. So let's make a stop. Tell me when. Ready? So, we're clamping onto it, and now we fit on nicely with the Easy Sheet system in. Do you remember I told you about the gap here? Well, we are gonna eliminate that. Whenever we have a bin on, the bin is touching this, so there's less movement. We need to put something within the A-frame that touches up against the hook, which will stop all the movement. So we're looking around for a bit of steel that we're gonna weld here and make this nice and strong and we can also use this to tie things down. Also, whoa, we nearly slipped. I think that we need a toolbox on here somewhere. If you can see over there, we have somewhere to store the pads. Those are the pads that you use when you put the legs down so you don't damage the road. But looking around the lorry, everything's very compact, but we need somewhere to put the ratchet straps. So we are thinking putting something here in between the third and fourth axle that sits just on top of these mud guards. In the railway yard, um, we saw one of the Volvos um, coming out of this yard loaded. And when it came out of the yard loaded, we heard the suspension go Aah! And when we're trying to clean out this yard, we're scraping the ground, but it's made an almighty dip here. And when it goes over the dip, it's really destroying the suspension on some of the lorries. So what we're doing is we have a little bit of this material left over. We're just putting it here and we're just spreading it out. And uh, yesterday we had the volumetrics calibrated and the cement that came out of it, it went into a bulk bag. Now we can't really get that back into a lorry because we don't want to hold it above the lorry and cut the bottom of the bag. So we're going to take this material and we're going to take the cement and we're going to spread some of the cement here and that should bond this and make a nice strong ramp which goes over the railway yard and stops damaging the suspension on the lorries. <laughs> you see Simon working hard. You see Simon working hard. He's got a new house, a new car, and a baby on the way, boy. You better put them hours in, son. <laughs> Flo has got some serious techers there. Nice. Let's go. Once we get the cement on it, it should bond, and by the morning. And here comes the bag of cement. I'm not gonna lie, that does come out well, man. Flo's just making sure that it doesn't sit too close to the track. It's already, get, it's already getting hard, isn't it? Some of you have probably realized I haven't got my high-vis on. That's because I gave Simon my high-vis earlier and I haven't gone to grab another one. We'll try and turn on the sprinkler without getting wet. Nice! Hey! Hey! What? No, you're trying to make me get wet. Oh, shrink. <laughs> As we turn on the sprinkler, it started raining. Uh, it's, just, it's all water, isn't it? It's Friday morning, I'm in the yard, and the scaffolders have arrived. Time to get this area watertight. <laughs>
So the saga of the toolbox continues. If you remember yesterday, I told you that we're gonna put a toolbox here. Then we thought about maybe putting a toolbox on the front here so we can do a bigger one. Then we realized if we put a toolbox here, then we're gonna be in the way with these, which means that we can't move 20 foot containers. So we went back to the drawing board and thought we're gonna do this. Then we realized doing it here, it's not gonna be big enough. So we're looking around the body thinking where we can fit things. And then we thought to ourselves, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cut this off and we're gonna cut an opening here. And we're ordering the biggest toolbox we can to go here, which is gonna be 630 by 400 by 400, I believe. So we're gonna cut this out, we're gonna fit it here. Then we're gonna take this and fit it on the body on the other side, up quite high so it's not in the way of anything. Then when you need to grab any ratchets or hooks or anything like that, you can merely open the toolbox here and you can get all your bits and pieces. And we are ordering a plastic one because if it takes a knock, it's not gonna fall to pieces. Whereas you know with the steel ones, if it takes a slap, it will be bent out of shape. I really want to get this lorry out on the road next week. So we've ordered 10 ratchet straps. They said that they used to be rated up to five tons, but because of um, European law, they're downgraded to four tons, but four tons is more than enough. We've got 10 of those, and we have ordered three sets of seven meter chains with hooks at each end and three binders. The biggest thing we could possibly move on this would be a 13 ton machine. So I'm basing it on the fact that we could tie down a 13 ton machine with that. That order should get here on Monday. The toolbox will also get here on Monday. We've done the other work on the side already, so hopefully that fits in place, and this lorry should be able to go out on the road very soon. Scaffolders have packed up for the day. We have one side watertight already and we have the new front line of the repair bay area. So the new gate is going to be at the front here. Already it's made a massive difference uh, just seeing all of it covered up. We're going to do the back on Monday and begin to build the rest of the front here. Going well. We found this around. This is a piece of steel that we got out of Gildan Village when we did the demolition in 2019. Uh, click here to watch that video. So it's been sat in the repair bay ever since and finally it's come in handy. It's tuba free, not tuba free box, it's tuba free solid. This is very heavy. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna weld one of these here and we're gonna weld one of these here and then put the Freeba 2 on top of that and then weld the whole thing together. Reason we're doing that is who wants to be standing here trying to hold that heavy piece of metal over there here while you're trying to get it in the right place and messing around with it. If you put these here, then you sit that on top of it after, you can weld the whole thing together, which will be extremely strong. Saturday morning, it's 5.32. I'm on the way to the yard. I have to be at QPR at 12.30, but I want to spend as much time as I can getting as much as I possibly can done. It's a little bit quieter today, so hopefully I have some time to focus on my to-do list, but there's so many operational things I need to get done. I did try this morning to go and get the armchair refueled, but I was unsuccessful because the petrol station didn't have any fuel left. But like I said last week, it's not life or death I still have a perfectly good vehicle to get around there's so many things that I've got outstanding at the moment there's so many lorries I'm trying to get out I have to get the roll on roll off I have to get everything that I want on it done because I always want vehicles to be able to do all the work which they're given to do and I want my staff to have all the tools to do their job the volumetric mixers I need to get them out on the road you saw that we bought them from a company up in the Midlands but to operate down here we have certain other rules because the lorry is going to be going into central London we have material in the yard and we're looking at new suppliers to deliver to us by rail we bank with Barclays and we're trying to sort a couple of things out but it's just when people start telling you computer says no it's very frustrating our networking issues they should be solved tomorrow we're filming in wednesday 
up in Yorkshire. Uh, there are a number of scripts that I've been writing, what I'd like to film as well. We're trying to find new videographers. I'm trying to recruit new drivers. I'm trying to recruit new people to work in the office in aggregates and concrete. We have new staff who have started who need to sit down with me because they're getting to know the business. We have website upgrades that we have to do and I'm trying to juggle everything all at the same time but you know when you're trying to do a hundred things at once you never get any of them done a hundred percent but what can I do this is a, this is the nature of trying to run your own business if I can get some clear headspace I can probably do a day's work in about four hours what time do you call this Terry thinks <laughs> that because he came in the yard before me. They can question me on my whereabouts. <laughs> it's a valid question. It is a valid question. question you on your whereabouts. <laughs> it's a valid question. I'm just disappointed you're here, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice, isn't it? <laughs> What's really good? Not a lot. Got these loaded. Got one loaded. 14 RMC. Load that with sand for the screed job. Are oh, you going to swap? You got to swap them around, yeah? Yeah, I've had to. Yeah. Yes, Terry. It is good. I like that. Do you like that, Tezza? Yeah, I do like that, yeah. Is my new Defender going to have that as well? Yeah, 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 Terry. <laughs> Terry's asking about his new Defender. Before you get a Defender, I don't know, it'd be... <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know. I don't know about all that. Uh, Ben's going to go out in this, but um, he's just turned it on. And this lorry has said it has no engine oil. So the man that normally drives this will have a few questions for him Monday morning. I'm just walking past. <sighs> I'm starting physio soon on my shoulder. So hopefully I'll be able to be back in the gym. I started using this gym on my last rehabilitation and then I started going back to Genesis a bit because my training got back more advanced. And now I'm gonna be back to basics all over again. The trouble is with the level of weights that I push, everything goes through your shoulder. If I'm doing legs, I have to hold on and that goes through your shoulder. I can't train my chest can't train my back. I'm possibly going to have to start trying a bit of swear word here. Cardio. <coughs> so I've got a little present here. Ara, who you've seen in the past, the creative mind at Asheville, he's brought me his Mac Tower. Trouble is, the man has gone and lost this padlock. Now, you know me, I'm a man. Waste not, want not. I can fix anything. So we're going to try and take this padlock off. We're going to take this apart and we're going to order probably a new solid state hard drive, order some RAM, and we're going to spec this up to something so powerful that it could probably make the next Toy Story. So let me go and find something to cut this here and not damage the Mac. What we're doing, we're putting duct tape on here so when we cut it we're protecting it from any of the fragments let's take off all our protective measures see where we put the tape on here protected from any of that dust going inside hold on this might be a bit hot that's a... Uh... We can now begin to open up the back of this and see what's going on inside and see how we can upgrade it. Work continues on the flatbed. There were points here that stuck out slightly. I guess when you use the army vehicles, I guess these are clamps that used to fit on. However, we've cut those off because they were rubbing on the back of the lorry when this was coming off. Having a look here, I can see up close the cutouts for the locks. And now what we're doing, we've taken the machine and we've turned this on its side so we can weld around the A-bar area at the front. final bit we're going to do on this flatbed now I know I keep saying it's the final bit but this is definitely the final bit is here now we are going to weld something that goes from here to here you can see where it's been marked out that's because there are hooks on the frame of the lorry so this is the bit I'm talking about right here on the frame this bit so if we weld a plate from here to here this should 
catch the hooks on the body of the lorry and it should stabilize it. It needs to kind of slide onto it and hold it in place. This will give extra stability. So it's firmly in place. I'm gonna go and grab the lorry. We're gonna use the machine and turn this back over and put it flat and try and put it on the lorry and see if it fits in place. So pleased that went on perfectly so now it's fixed on the body and if you have a very close look underneath the locks we built it up slightly more so there was even less play and the locks are so tight now that you'll notice that it straightened the flatbed so it's secure on here also because of the new bar on the a-frame there is no movement at all on the hook where it's connected so before there was a little bit of play now that a bar is pushing against the hook there's no play at all and everything is much more secure we're ready for the toolbox to be fitted on monday uh, the chains and the ratchet straps will also be delivered and finally this lorry will be ready for the road it's sunday morning and i'm on the road again Daniel is rolling on the road again. But this time we're doing a bit of Russian roulette. You see, I'm on the way to a wedding in Birmingham and I am on a reserve tank of fuel. Now the plan is uh, to get onto the motorway and get up there and I hear there is normality in the north of the country. But I'm not even sure if I've got enough fuel to get up to the services. So if I don't, this is gonna be um, a very traumatizing experience. And if I do, I'm gonna feel like I planned it and I did the right thing. Trying to drive this car economically, trying to save fuel, is um, it is not easy. I got to the bottom of the road and I feel like I, I, it cost me 20 quid. I'm trying my best not to accelerate harshly, but to move a boat this big, you have to put your foot down. So let's see how I get on. So the plot thickens. I am now on, oh man, it went down. I had 50 miles and now I have 49 miles. There's no way that I just went a mile. It's a deep dish. I'm the original Sunday driver, national speed limit of 70, and I'm doing 60. You know, when you're young and you get your first car and you've never got any fuel, so you turn off the stereo and you turn off the aircon because you think it's saving fuel. I've gone into that mode right now. I am a couple of minutes away from the services at Beaconsfield. If they do not have fuel there, it's curtains. And by the way, before anyone points it out, I have my suit in the boot. I'm not going to a wedding dressed like this. Although some people do have weddings like that. That is not the type of wedding I'm going to. Here we go, we're coming off the Beaconsfield. Now I can see a lot of cars coming out of here. So I think it's Sunday morning and everybody's got the same idea. Oh no. Oh no. It was at this point that Daniel realized that he messed up. I've got to get back on the road. Nah, I am in trouble. We are down to 38 miles. Thankfully, we are driving downhill at this point and it's just all or nothing, everything but the kitchen sink. I'm not turning around and go, we are past the point of no return. You know, when you go on a mission, on a plane, and from this point, you can't go back. You know that no matter what, you will be behind enemy trenches. That is what I am. Past the point of no return, I'm going for it. Oh, I'm going downhill. We've gone up to 43 miles because I'm going downhill. Nice. About to come off the Oxford Circus. Circuses, yeah? We're about to come off at Oxford Services. Surfaces are, we're about to come off at Oxford Services. Thankfully, there's been a lot of downhill driving. Let's hope there's fuel. Situation critical. No. Is that ultimate unleaded? Turns out, after a big kerfuffle, they didn't actually have fuel there. 
So now I'm back on the motorway and I am now down to 30 miles and I have a tyre pressure warning. Situation critical. I can't tell. <clears throat> it looks like diesel. I'm at the petrol station. If, I, if they don't have fuel, that's it. I'm gonna have to call it a day, unfortunately. This is it, man. This is it. Yes, yes, victory is ours. Yes, he took a gamble and it paid off. Result and premium. Nice. <laughs> I mean, give him 30 pound, but 30 pound is better than nothing. So I've managed to get 30 quid to keep it moving further up to the north of the country where hopefully everyone isn't panicking. <laughs> on the road again. Daniel is rolling on the road again. Got 144 miles, 30 quid. Well, 30% of something is better than 100% of nothing. Nice, on the road again. <laughs> yes. Well, I've made it in time. And I have a full tank of petrol. Time for the vowels. And I hear they have a crispy cream table here. Boy, I'm gonna be going back down the motorway with a lot more weight than I came up with. Happy Sunday. That's it for Asheville Weekly, episode 52. Click here for the Asheville website. Click here to subscribe to our channel. Click here to see episode one of Asheville Weekly and click here to see last week's episode, which was number 51. One year. A couple of times I didn't think we were gonna make it. It's not been easy, but one whole year. <laughs>